Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 24th of September. PM Modi launches fitness protocols on first anniversary of Fit India movement. Activist blames China Pakistan trying to change legal status of Gilgit Baltistan. And Afghan president calls to address root cause of terrorism for sustainable peace. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday launched fitness protocols during the online Fit India Dialogue 2020 to mark the one-year anniversary of the Fit India movement. The Fit India Dialogue is yet another effort to involve citizens to draw out a plan to make India a fit nation. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday interacted with fitness experts and influencers during a nationwide online Fit India dialogue organized to celebrate the first anniversary of the Fit India movement. During the event, the Prime Minister shared his thoughts on the virtues of a healthy life. He also launched the Fit India age-appropriate fitness protocols, which has been prepared for three age categories. Envisioned by the Prime Minister as a people's movement, the Fit India Dialogue is yet another endeavour to involve citizens of the country to draw out a plan to make India a fit nation. Fit India movement ki first anniversary par main sabhi deshwasiyon ke achhe swasth ki kamna karta hu. Ek saal ke bhitar bhitar ye fitness movement मूवमेंट ऑफ पीपल भी बन चुका है और मूवमेंट ऑफ पॉजिटिविटी बन बन चुका है देश में हेल्थ और फिटनेस को लेकर निरंतर अवेयरनेस में बढ़ोतरी होती चली जा रही है फिटनेस हैज बिकम एन इवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ लाइफ इन टाइम्स ऑफ कोविड 19 Earlier on Wednesday, Prime Minister Modi, while interacting with chief ministers of seven states and union territories, which were worsted by the pandemic, reiterated the importance of face masks in halting the spread of coronavirus. He told them to increase their focus on effective testing, tracing and treatment of the disease. Meanwhile, India's COVID-19 case tally crossed 5.7 million mark with a spike of 86,508 new cases in the last 24 hours. The country now has 966,382 active cases. Amid the continuous protests from the opposition parties over recently passed farm bills, India's Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh has said the bills will bring revolutionary changes in the lives of farmers as they can sell their produce to get any buyer, get a guarantee of price of their crops and reduce their input. India's Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar amid the ongoing controversy on recently passed farm bills said the laws will bring revolutionary changes in the lives of farmers as they can sell their produce to any buyer get a guarantee of price of their crops use new technology and reduce their input costs in an exclusive interview with news agency ANI Tomar also launched a strong attack on the country's main opposition Congress party over its protests against the bills saying the congress leadership is trying to mislead farmers for its own vested interests the farmers produce trade and commerce promotion and facilitation bill 2020 and the farmers empowerment and protection agreement of price assurance and farm services bill 2020 were passed by the indian parliament on 20th of september कुल मिला के ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि खेती और किसानी का विषय जब आए तो किसी भी दल को सियासत नहीं करना चाहिए किसानों के साथ बहुत अन्याय हो चुका किसानों का बहुत शोषण हो चुका किसान इस देश का सबसे बड़ा उत्पादन करता है 
और उसको जो स्वतंत्रता होनी चाहिए वो मोदी सरकार ने इन बिलों के माध्यम से दी है Opposition parties and some farmer groups have been demanding that the government should roll back the farm reform bills as these would threaten minimum support price and in turn would leave some small and marginal farmers in the hands of corporate and large scale institutional buyers. The opposition members even created ruckus in the upper house of the parliament during the passage of the agriculture bills last week which led to suspension of eight lawmakers. The government maintains The new laws will end the role of middlemen in the farming sector. A personnel of India's paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force was killed in a terrorist attack on a patrol party in Badgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday. The terrorist also looted the service rifle of the personnel in Chandura area of Badgam before they fled from the scene. The area was immediately cordoned off and search operations were underway. till the last reports came in this came two days after security forces gunned down a terrorist belonging to pakistan based jaish e mohammed terror group in badgam district meanwhile in another incident one terrorist was neutralized by security forces in an encounter in tral area of jammu and kashmir on thursday moving on Political activist Dr Shabir Chaudhry has raised concerns over Pakistan's announcement to give provincial status to Gilgit Baltistan. He claimed China and Pakistan are trying to change the legal status of the illegally occupied region amid border row with India. Activist Dr Shabir Chaudhry has blamed China and Pakistan are trying to change the status of Gilgit Baltistan. amid China's ongoing border row with India speaking on the recent announcement by Pakistan to elevate Gilgit Baltistan to the status of a full-fledged province Chaudhry said the illegally occupied region's assimilation into Pakistan works well with China that has poured billions of dollars for the construction of China Pakistan economic corridor or CPEC He said the move is aimed to change the legal status of Gilgit Baltistan which India claims as part of its erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. Unko matlab idea ye tha ki to keep India engaged taaki wo yahan par koi gadbad na kar sake. India ne jaise China ne is baat par to agree kiya. Saath hi ye bhi emphasize kiya ki theek hai hum ye karte hain lekin aap bhi iska jo legal status hai uska kuch kare. To udhar China ne India ko busy kar diya engage kar diya. और दूसरी तरफ पाकिस्तान ने अपना जो है ना वो सफेद दुरुस्त करना शुरू कर दिए इस इलाके को वो कहते हैं भाई अपना हिस्सा बना रहा है Gilgit Baltistan which is on CPEC's route has witnessed regular protests over alleged human rights violations by Pakistani forces to muzzle dissent in the region against the so-called developmental project Activists claim CPEC has only brought death and destruction for the local people instead of economic opportunities and accuse those who have opposed it have been subject to torture and violent crackdowns In news from Afghanistan Afghan president Ashraf Ghani has said in order to achieve sustainable peace in Afghanistan there is a need to get to the root of the terrorism problem blighting the region In his address to the 75th session of the UN General Assembly Ghani also listed the source of the turmoil that the war-torn country has been dealing with over the years. Afghanistan's president Ashraf Ghani on Wednesday said, in order to achieve sustainable peace in his country, there is a need to get to the root of the terrorism problem blighting the region and address it as the global threat that it is. addressing the general debate at the 75th session of the UN General Assembly through a pre-recorded video statement Ghani listed sources of the turmoil that his war torn country has been dealing with over the years He also said Afghanistan is moving from an aid to trade economy with a 5 year plan for growth investment As a state and society we have demonstrated the commitment compassion and courage to take hard decisions to start direct peace talks with the Taliban this won't be enough for sustainable peace in Afghanistan we must get to the roots of the terrorism problem blighting our region and address it as the global phenomenon and threat that it is the afghan president's remark came as in an effort to end the two decades of war 
The Afghan government and the Taliban are engaged in peace talks in Doha. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa has called on the United Nations to end the political witch hunts through questionable motives against member states in order to ensure the sustainability and credibility of the organization. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in a pre-recorded address to the United Nations General Assembly's annual debate on Wednesday highlighted his government's successes in managing the spread of COVID-19 pandemic and creating new trends for economic revival. President Rajapaksa called on the UN Health Agency World Health Organization to facilitate universal access to a COVID-19 vaccine once developed. He also underlined the need to end political witch hunts through questionable motives against member states. Doing so, he said, would ensure the sustainability and the credibility of the United Nations. Sri Lanka, he said, is committed to follow a neutral foreign policy with no affiliations to any particular country or power bloc. The UN system needs to ensure equity inclusivity and transparency while being more responsive to the ever-changing global environment. In order to ensure the sustainability and the credibility of the organization, political witch hunts through questionable motives against member states need to be halted. The island nation has been criticized for the killing of thousands of Tamil civilians at the end of the civil war in 2009 by the UN's human rights bodies and several Western countries. They have called for an investigation into the matter, but Sri Lanka has opposed it. Scores of devotees gathered this week at the Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib Shrine in Pakistan to offer prayers on the 481st death anniversary of Sikhism founder Guru Nanak. The Holy Shrine marks the site where the spiritual leader spent the last 18 years of his life. Thousands of Pakistani Sikhs, mostly from Sindh and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, attended a three-day event this week, marking the 481st death anniversary of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism at Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan's Punjab province. Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib, one of the Sikhism's holiest shrines in Pakistan, marks the site where Guru Nanak spent the last 18 years of his life and is believed to be the final resting place of the spiritual leader. Devotees who visited the Sikh place of worship expressed that they wished that the Sikhs from neighboring India could also join in the prayer event that ended on Tuesday amid coronavirus pandemic. यही अरदास है कि जैसे पाकिस्तान में पेंडेमिक कंट्रोल में आ गया है कोरोना का वैसे ही इंडिया में भी पेंडेमिक कंट्रोल में आ जाए ताकि वहां के भी जो श्रद्धालु हैं जो सिख हैं और दूसरे को सिख हैं उनको यहां पे आने का मौका मिले एन इंडियन ऑफिशियल सेड ड्यू टू ट्रैवल रिस्ट्रिक्शंस इंपोज्ड बाय अथॉरिटीज टू स्टेम कोरोना वायरस स्प्रेड मूवमेंट हैज बीन सस्पेंडेड टेंपरेरीली अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर सिंस मार्च a border crossing pact between the nuclear armed neighbors allows visa free access from india to visit gurdwara kartarpur sahib in pakistan well that's the way it was in south asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again pm modi launches fitness protocols on first anniversary of fit india movement Activist blames China Pakistan trying to change legal status of Gilgit Baltistan. And Afghan president calls to address root cause of terrorism for sustainable peace. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन